hello everyone and uh, in this video we are going to discuss uh, how much dsa is required for qa guys so like i'll be starting first from the basic stuff uh, which every qa should know and after this uh, like we can discuss on what are the medium things uh, which are good to have and after that uh, like whatever the endless are opportunities we have okay so without wasting any time let's start so when we talk when we talk of basics so you should know the data types by data types i mean uh, all the uh, primitives and non primitive data types this looks very easy and are easy but at least uh, you should have an understanding of uh, like different kind of data structures and uh, like the data types primitive and non primitive okay and after that once you go through the non primitive data types you will understand what are the arrays what we have some strings also so when you are going through strings just try to like know the difference between string string buffer and string builder why strings are immutable these kind of things these kind of basic things and not only uh, you should uh, prepare for interviews but also for your for your own understanding about uh, how you are going to approach if uh, you get any problem on strings and after that arrays because like that's why i have covered it in basic okay this is bare minimum which each and every qa should know after that like once you are done with these things i think these things are also uh, very good to have so you should know the difference between array and array list what are the negatives of array that actually array list improved okay so once we have uh, something like once we have a problem then only we try to go to solution right so what are the problems with array how we overcome them overcome it using array list and once we get into array list so we uh, get into collection framework collection framework okay so there we have to see like what all different things are there list set queues and in this like array list and link list are very much important and like vector and stacks are also there but uh, they are not that widely used and if you are learning collection framework then obviously you can have a look into it and see that what are it how we are going to push and pop the elements um, in stack and all that but like the array list you cannot uh, like you should know array list okay and the same with the link list that uh, how the pointers are uh, working and uh, like what are the things uh, the differences between these two okay and um, after that uh, we have the map framework so in that hash map is a part of it so once you once you will design your framework so you are going to have some key value pairs okay so how you are going to um, like handle key values so for that we have the best option that is hash map so like proceed it step by step first uh, like go through strings then array move to array list collection frameworks what are link list stack like queues and priority queues what are these just have an like uh, overview of all these things but like you should be good very good in array list and link list and hash maps okay and when i say uh, hash maps uh, so hash map will help you in your coding rounds also because like most of the every third problem which i see can be uh, solved it through hash map so that's why it is also necessary to understand the hash maps after that uh, like in our btech we have um, like if you have done your btech and i'm not sure about bc or bsc it but in our engineering we have this uh, like we have covered this searching and sorting algorithms so we have a subject called da design and analysis of algorithms so in that uh, we study these things but like just go through them once again just try to see the complexities the time complexities like when 
when i was a junior uh, qa so at that time like if i'm working on a framework and if i'm trying to include a for loop so like it just a, like i have to um, solve the equation and i don't uh, worry about uh, for loop if loop why i'm using it but as you grow through your career and you have to design uh, the frameworks in such a way that i'm i'm 100% sure that uh, like time complexity will not bother in most of the cases but again this is important part from interview perspective because the interviewer might ask okay tell me the uh, time complexity of uh, binary search algorithm or he may give you a program and tell you okay find me this uh, time complexity so like it's good to have and after that as you are learning all these things so just uh, get get your hand, hands dirty and try to do some basic programs that will surely going to help you um, in your learning as well as interview and i have kept this blank on purpose because once you are done with all this then there is no end to uh, like there is no limit on how and what you can learn so in my like if you take my suggestion then after you are done with all this just uh, keep on practicing some problems try to like uh, try to see a pattern uh, like there are some patterns if you are trying to solve the lead code problems so there is a sliding window pattern and there are pretty much other patterns also so each and every problem can be uh, can be solved through problem uh, through patterns so that's it but like till here each and every like if you are 5 plus 5 years of experience plus then you should know till here at least so that's my like understanding and uh, just comment down below if you feel that uh, i have left something or you think something is important that should be included in that and um, that's it guys if you have an issue just uh, comment down below and um, don't uh, don't forget to connect with me over linkedin thank you guys thanks for watching